Hi, I'm glad you're here with me at True Texas History Today. We're going to be dealing with the question of who is James Throckmorton and why does McKinney, Texas want to do away with him? Well, James Throckmorton, that's actually James Webb Throckmorton. <clears throat> uh, he's an early mover and shaker in Texas history. He's one that... Um, even though you don't hear a lot about him, uh, he contributed in, in some uh, major ways. Uh, he was originally from Tennessee. You know, a lot of those early Texas uh, founders were uh, people from Tennessee. It's almost like they had this uh, old settler's mindset that uh, they brought with them to Texas. And, and he was one of them. He came down here with his family in 1841. So... Uh, it was still uh, the Republic of Texas then, and uh, they settled over in Collin County near McKinney. And, um, you know, they started becoming uh, prominent people in the county. In fact, you know, one of his relatives is uh, who Throckmorton County is named after, and there is a Throckmorton, Texas. But uh, he left to study uh, medicine with his uncle at one point. Uh, in 1845 and was there until the war with Mexico broke out and uh, you know, he loved Texas. He came down here, pick me, pick me. He was, he was a volunteer and uh, he joined uh, the war and the uh, Mexican War and uh, saw some action. He started as a private and ended up being um, leaving the war uh, as a second surgeon, so he was commissioned. He saw action at Monterey, Saltillo, and Buena Vista. Um, and he ended up being discharged with a disability. He came back and married and um, married a, a gal from Illinois and ended up settling there in McKinney, Texas. He tried uh, establishing a medical practice, uh, was one of the early doctors in the county, but he found that distasteful. He uh, moved on into politics and, um, you know, served in the legislature. Uh, he <clears throat> did that for uh, e either as a representative or senator for about 10 years. So, I mean, he, he put in his time uh, both times that Sam Houston ran for governor. James Throckmorton was there. He, he was uh, on the ball. He supported him. And uh, he was a delegate to the secession convention, and uh, he ended up being one of uh, seven to vote uh, against secession. Um, and, and that whole episode, you know, I, I wish I could take you back in a time machine and, and capture that. Uh, because essentially, you know, the proposal uh, was put forth, and each delegate was called on to cast their vote. Uh, you know, it was during the winter months. It was kind of cold outside. Uh, what little warmth they had were from some of the um, kind of like mini stoves or ovens or mini fireplaces. Uh, and um, the thing is, when uh, he was called up, he stated, uh, Mr. President, in the presence of God and my country, and unawed by the spirit of revolution around me, I vote no. And at that moment, the whole uh, area um, broke out with boos and hisses. And then uh, Throckmorton spinned around uh, and directed his attention to the speaker and proclaimed, Mr. President, when the rabble hiss, well, may patriots tremble. Uh, and it was only, you know, and it took Judge Roberts, who was presiding over the whole thing, uh, Judge Orrin Roberts, he later became governor, but uh, it took him a while to restore order, order and voting was resumed. Um, but that quote, you know, you probably heard it uh, many times. That was uh, James W. Throckmorton, James Webb Throckmorton. Um, and... Um, you know, toward the end of the voting, uh, Governor Houston, who had been opposed to the idea, finally walked in uh, and all eyes were on Houston. They wanted to see 
what his reaction was. I mean, whether or not you liked or disliked Houston, people still looked to him for guidance. And they did so there, and they were looking for either signs of his approval or disapproval, and he was just flat and motionless uh, watching what was going on. And finally, the proposal passed, um, and, you know, Throckmorton uh, voted his conscience, which is what you would expect uh, an admirable person to do. And... Um, then, after Texas um, went ahead and voted to, uh, because technically Texas went ahead and uh, reasserted its independence again, and then once as an independent uh, agency, went ahead and joined the Confederacy, and he went ahead, and since that was the direction Texas went, he joined with them. Uh, he became an agent uh, and a soldier uh, that worked over in uh, the Indian territories. He saw action there. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, was there with, uh, Fort Washita, Arbuckle, and Cobb, um, and then finally he worked his way on up to, uh, being a Brigadier General, and he was the Confederate Commissioner to the Indians. Uh, now, when the war ended, uh, you know, and Texas was trying to uh, get back into the Union. You know, a bunch of obstacles were put in the way. Uh, I mean, we even uh, sent delegates to Congress, and the Congress refused to sit up. They didn't even want to acknowledge us as a state. Um, but during that time, Throckmorton was the, the president of the Constitutional Convention, and uh, in 1866, and he was even elected governor. And as governor, he was given the responsibility to go out and, uh, well, at that time, they uh, were trying to uh, get reconstruction in place. And a fellow that was in charge was uh, General Charles Griffin. And Griffin gave Throckmorton uh, the assignment to see to it that uh, everybody was, uh, you know, all the folks were registered to vote, and he went ahead and did it, and uh, that went well, and then Griffin thought, uh, there's too many blacks in y'all's uh, penitentiary. I want you to pardon every one of them, uh, irregardless of what crime they committed. Uh, because Griffin assumed, just because uh, a black man was in Huntsville, that... Uh, he was there just because of uh, color and not because he did anything wrong. When uh, Governor Throckmorton refused uh, to abide by that, Griffin went ahead and had him removed from office as an impediment. Now, uh, everything was kind of crazy back then. Uh, yeah, because Texas was uh, considered a military district and they were debates were raging as to whether or not uh, they should do away with every law passed because that would uh, involve undoing every marriage, every land deal, everything. Um, and they were actually debating these things. Um, now Throckmorton uh, went ahead and uh, <coughs> you know, they felt like he uh, was a legitimate governor, uh, which he was for a period of time. And uh, after all that stuff settled down, he ended up uh, serving as a representative in Congress. And he was very highly involved uh, with uh, government and private industry in terms of uh, railroad. And uh, he felt that... Um, Although the railroads uh, still needed to be independent, they're still uh, the government still needed to regulate them, uh, and so he was one of the thinkers that eventually set up the uh, Texas Railroad uh, Commissioner type of thinking in ways of government uh, regulating the railroads. Now keep in mind that very agency is now the one that regulates uh, oil production and energy. So Throckmorton left his imprint 
uh, on Texas, and it's still being felt. Um, now, he eventually died uh, in 1894. Uh, I mean, he loved his state. He was willing to do whatever it took. Um, and uh, he showed that he put his mouth, uh, you know, he backed up what he said. And uh, in fact, he was known as uh, Old Leathercoat. Now, why he was known as Old Leathercoat, I don't know. But that was his nickname. I always find that nicknames are fascinating. But there in McKinney, Texas, there are some folks that don't like uh, Throckmorton. And they want his statue removed. Um, I mean, to me, he would be a, a good role model. And, you know, rather than throw him out... Um, you know, those old things ought to inspire us to try to be better men, to try to aspire to the principles that uh, the lives of these people teach us. Um, but I'm not McKinney, Texas. I can't tell them what to do. Um, but uh, I do want to tell you the stories behind things while the statues are still there, while you can still learn these things. Uh, to at least know who these people are. So, you know, when you go into uh, towns there in Collin County and you see the statue of this guy with his arm sticking out, you know the story behind him. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this has been True Texas History. And until next time, uh, via con Dios. You know, the story of some of that's right here. Texans always move them. Uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.